to do that he's a good God. All the time. All the time. All the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to give God glory. Honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let the saints go to work. That's when the King of Kings will come in. When the saints go up the praise, that's when the Spirit shall inhabit this place where the souls get on one accord and begin to bless the Lord, the, the King who is strong and mighty. Yeah, the King who is mighty in battle. Yeah, the King of the Lord we shall come in. Where the saints we go. That's when the deliverance will take place. When the saints go out in praise, all Satan's power they are erased. Every trap the enemy set. No, it won't work. No, it won't. Thank you, Jesus. It won't work. Hallelujah. Who is strong and mighty? Who is mighty in battle? Yes, he is. Of the Lord shall come in. Come on, how many want to welcome God into the house on this morning? Hallelujah. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. You're the king and you're invited to come in to this sanctuary, this tabernacle. Jesus, you're the king, and you're invited to come in. Come on, with those hands, hallelujah. Oh, we welcome you in. We welcome you in. You're the king and you're invited to come in. We welcome you in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you in. Hallelujah. You're the king and you're 
Jesus, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and praise him. Praise you. Put all the earth. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. 
Just for the thing that you've done, God. Just for being God. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you're, you're going through things, and no matter what you go through, you know God is always going to be good. Hallelujah. He's able. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why I don't mind. Certain songs you just you just do redos because you don't you, you know that uh, you you go through something throughout the week but you all but you always know that that song matches the situation. Yes. And then when you come back to it, it's not old to you. It's new to you. Cause tell somebody. God won't make a way for me. You can't tell me. Oh, I don't put your hands together. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. Back in the day, old school, I, I, I tell you, next, next week, I think that's all we're going to do. We're going to go back a little bit. We're going to do all old school. Hallelujah. Things that we came, came up on. We're going to teach you some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what we were going through, we was always... We were always excited about getting into the house of God. Yeah. Nothing else mattered. Yeah. Nothing else mattered. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know we're at a different time, but God has not changed. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Sunday morning service, we wouldn't even leave. We were, we were so excited about losing our seat when the next service came. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that, that's how excited we were about being in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. And the, and the way you're clapping, that's, that's that apostolic clap. That's an apostolic clap. Where you just lose your mind in God and you just clap in those hands because you know that whatever you pray for, He's going to do for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why we want God to hear our prayer. Yeah. Tell somebody we want God to hear our prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. If you don't mind, just clap your hands and tell God to hear your prayer. Oh, 
believe in the power of prayer. Come on, how many believe in the power of prayer? Prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through, prayer changes things. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for God. All you have to do is put your trust in the name of Jesus. I am a true believer that if you put your trust in the name of Jesus, He will bring you out. I need to say to stop thinking that the world can do things for you. Stop thinking that the world can do things for you. The world is in a terrible mess. You would have thought during this virus that, that people would be running to God, but they're continuing in what they are doing. 
and I tell everyone that I talk to, this virus was a worldwide altar call. This was a worldwide altar call. Jesus. And those who passed up the altar call uh -huh. and you continue in your lifestyle. Uh -huh. When he comes, these things are going to be brought back to your remembrance. Thank you, Jesus. All the time that you heard, come to Jesus before it's too late. Come. Come. Give him your life. Come. Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God, and I want to know, does anybody in here thank God just for the call, and that you answered the call? Come on, give God great praise in here, because you answered the call. My God is in the other God. You answered the call. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God praise in here. Don't pack, take them out. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Somebody need him on this morning. Call his name. 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 Call his Him. He is Alpha Omega, beginning and ending, first and last, that which was and is and is to come. And his name is Jesus. 
name, we just ought to praise him because he has the greatest name. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Whether you do it freely or whether you do it because you have to, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. We are just so grateful and so honored to be in the house of God one more time. Amen. It is a privilege to be in God's house. Amen. There's a lot of houses that people are in. This morning, this afternoon, but I'm glad to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Rise upon your feet, all of you that are able. Amen. We want to give a resounding happy Father's Day to all the fathers in here. In fact, your hands for the Father. Chose a man, our little man, to the piece of family. Amen. Amen. And those families make up the Lord's church. So we thank God for the plan that He had. Amen. And He created Adam in His image and after His likeness. Amen. So we say that we have to speak to all of you. We want to look very in the book of Titus, the Apostle Paul writes, with these 46 verses of this book. And we want you to consider the second chapter of the book of Titus. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of God? Yeah. 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 You know, it seems like you're like running through the service. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. On Sunday to Sunday, I think I'll be in the right house. Hallelujah. And y'all won't learn that old school song. Might as well get the tape. Load, load it down on iTunes or whatever y'all y'all do. <laughs> Amen. The songs have substance. Amen. You heard his name called. And just didn't say him or he. You knew who they were talking about. You couldn't take the same song and play it in the club. Amen. Amen. I could take gospel and play it in the club and you can sit in a seat to it. It ain't gospel music. All right. Okay, I'm not even going on that tangent. Well, Just going to park it right there and I'll pick it up later. The book of Titus, chapter number two. <laughs> two of the night is nature. Let's start at verse number one. We will read down. The verse number nine. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged may be sober, brave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as become holiness. Not false accusers, not given as much wine, teachers of good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Let the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, Exhort to be sober-minded, 
In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gratitude, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of a contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. This is the word of the Lord. This hour. We're going to just deal, amen, with the art that is pertinent to Father's Day. So we're going to talk to the men, amen, this afternoon. And also to the ladies as it relates to what a good man looks like. Amen. I just want to deal with, are you qualified? Uh, are you qualified? The letter was sent to Titus while he was in the city of Crete. The church here at Crete needed a man leadership, and so Titus is here appointing both bishops and elders in the Lord's church. The Apostle Paul wanted Titus to find qualified men to fulfill those roles. And you can tell that Paul had a close relationship with Titus because he called him his own son, according to the common faith. And so when we look at that word son, we see that in 1 Corinthians, the third and the fourth chapter, Paul would write to the church in Corinth, and he would, uh, as the people there were making comparisons as to who they were under or who they were a part of. Some say, I am of Apollos. Some say, I am of Paul. But Paul said, let me qualify what a son really is. The Bible says, he told them in the fourth chapter of 1 Corinthians, you have many instructors, you have benefited from many instructors, but you have very few fathers. And so we, we understand, because it is Father's Day, we understand uh, maybe to some degree what the role of a father is. And from an actual standpoint, a father is supposed to take care of their children, their home, they're supposed to get up and go to work every day. A man, the wife, is supposed to be the help meet or to help meet whatever needs that that family has. But it is ultimately the responsibility of the man to take care of his family. A man to you, fathers. And so uh, that is how God set it up. That is how God ordained it. And it wasn't like that from the beginning. After man fell, the first thing he gave Adam was a job. He gave Adam a job. Before the Bible said when he made man, he made them Adam. Then when Adam fell, he said, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to go to work. And so from the beginning, now he instituted this, 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 uh, how it's established in the home of the father, amen, the wife, the children. That's, that's the plan of God. And sin messed it all up. It messed it all up because now we have dis, dis, uh, jointed families. We have yeah. dysfunctional families. Yeah. We have uh, uh, single parent families. Yeah. We have all of that going on. And, uh -huh. and that is a result of sin. Right. And so, so Paul says when he writes to the church here in Crete and in the church in Corinth, he says, I need you to know what it's supposed to look like. You're supposed to have fathers. Amen. And so when he talks about fathers in the scripture, he's talking about spiritual parenting. How a spiritual parent is supposed to have a relationship they're supposed to have with those under their care. And that relationship in the church was supposed to be an extension of a relationship that you were supposed to have at home. Yes. Uh, yes. So he said, you've got many instructors, but you have very few fathers. 
instructors. And when he uses this word instructors, it, not, it is not the Greek word to mean, that means to teach. Uh, this word instructor means to have a guide or a guardian. It was used in both Roman and Greek culture for a guide or guardian to be over a little boy. Mm -hmm. That's why this word instructor was used because Paul says you have a lot of guards and guardians and guides yes. that will be over you or help you in your infancy or in maturity, but you don't have a lot of fathers. Right. This person, this instructor, exercised general supervision over how a person or a young boy would, would uh, grow morally and physically. It is the same word as schoolmaster. The boys were not, using this word, the boys were not even allowed to come out of the house unless their guardian allowed them out. So when Paul said you have uh, 10,000 instructors, you have a whole lot of people who have helped you along the way, but you don't have many fathers. So he makes the difference between instructor and father. This word father in the Greek is this word pater, P A or pater, P A T A E R. It means one that will protect and uphold a individual. It is one who is considered a preacher of the gospel and a teacher of all things concerning the word of God. Paul then says, you've got a lot of instructors. He says, but it was me who begat you in the gospel. Uh -huh. In other words, it was me who told you how to get saved. Yes. Yes. All right. Because many times, and if we're not careful, many times we will dismiss the person that brought you to Christ in an effort to get somebody that's going to tell you some wonderful flowery things that will make your ears tingle, but they ain't going to tell you the truth about yourself. So Paul says, I, I, I'm going to be a father to you. I want to spiritually parent you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what the word says about your conduct, your behavior, your lifestyle, and how you navigate through this thing called being saved. Right. Spiritual father or the spiritual parent should never then be decided by a person's reputation or popularity. In other words, we don't have spiritual parents based upon how popular they are or how, how well known they are. Our spiritual parents are not based upon uh, whether they've got more degrees or, or more schools of learning or have got a bigger church. Our parentage is as a result of the Holy Ghost yeah. being put, uh, uh, you having the Holy Ghost and you being led by the God in them. Uh -huh. right that. Uh -huh. And so here now, Paul says here in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, not I need to take my time because it seems like we just rushed through praise and worship and y'all just got it over. Uh, but but, but uh, we ain't going to do that. We're not going to. We're not going to do that. We're going to allow God to be God, amen. 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 And we're going to allow the songs to minister to us where we are in God, so you can get something from God. So when you go home, you can have you can have power with God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hebrews the thirteenth chapter it says, "Remember them which have the rule over you, who number one have spoken unto you the word of God." How do you pick pick a spiritual parent? They will tell you what the word says. Yeah. Yes. If you go into their office and get counseling, if you call them on the telephone, if you meet them out in the parking lot and they have a conversation with you, they're going to tell you what the word says. All right. So he said, remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken to you the word of God. A spiritual parent is not afraid whether or not you're going to throw a tantrum. Well, all right. They could care less. Your parents could care less if you had a good one. If you throw one, you better not be out in public. Because it's going to be all bad. Because wherever you fell out, you're going to get knocked out. <laughs> So the spiritual parent is not intimidated by whether or not you can receive what they're telling you. They're not intimidated. They don't care whether or not you're going to go home and pout you go, or, 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 or for the next three months you don't come back. They're going to tell you what the word of God says. And the problem, 
up. Can I help y'all today? The problem with the parenting in the society is the children are telling the parents what to do and the parents are scared of their children. If your four-year-old can tell you no and get away with it, my it's your fault. My if your three-year-old can stop to their room and slam the door that you pay for every month, it's your fault. If I say get up, we're going to church. That's it. You better, you better get to moving. Just ask for me in this house. Now, my mom used to say, when you get your own house, you do what you want to do in your own house, but ask for this house. Well, well, well Pastor, we need more psychology. I don't have to read your mind because your head is on the floor. <laughs> I'm talking about parenting yes. that you're not intimidated yes. by the ones that God gave to you. Right. 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 Now, I'm not, now I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they will not go through seasons of rebellion. Uh -huh. right. But how you handle it, yeah. how you navigate through it, will determine whether or not you go to the graveyard to visit yes. them. Yes. Right. 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 So you got to deal with these spirits when they two or three years old. It's not cute. Yeah. Your two-year-old cousin ain't cute. Right because if they cuss you out at two, you ain't going to be able to handle them by the time they get to five. Amen. And then the police going to lock you up. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus. Oh, wow. Our Lord. What's the name of the lesson? I don't want to get off the horse. Are you qualified? <laughs> Are you qualified? Amen. Talking to the fathers. Your conversation, your counsel to your children should be based on the scripture. I'm talking to you because this is what the word says. Well, well, why am I getting a whipping? The Bible said, beat them, they won't die. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm in the Bible. Every time you got a whipping, I was in the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Listen, because if you don't, I'm telling you, if you don't, somebody else will. First of all, it says, remember them which have a rule over you, spoken to you, number one, the word of God. Number two, whose faith follow. In other words, they're not telling you something that they're not doing themselves. Amen. It is not right or proper, proper for you to tell your children, do as I say and not as I do. Amen. Amen. You have to lead them by example. Amen. Then thirdly, it says, consider the end of their conversation. Watch how they live, their manner of life, their conduct, their behavior. Jesus. What do they do when they're not at church? What? How do they act when they're in the grocery store? He said, consider their manner of life. Everything about you is being seen, whether through the eyes of the church or the eyes of the world. And what are you telling people when you're not in God's house? Titus then. Happy Father's Day, <laughs> Titus chapter number 1 verse number 9 says be sound in doctrine amen. amen know what the scripture says get some understanding about what God's word says uh -huh. holding fast the faithful am I there Titus 1 and 9 yeah. holding fast the faithful word uh -huh. as he have been taught that he may be sound, may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. 
Now, the spiritual fathers, he says, should know enough word to be able to answer whatever question comes their way. I have seen in this, this time, more so than any, that preachers, they be talking, but they're not preaching the word. Amen. All right. And then when you ask them something about the word, they want to give you something out of their own intellect or their own reasoning. But he says you should be able to answer them by the scripture. Yes. Spiritual fathers must be rooted in the word of God that others cannot fault their doctrine or you cannot provide an answer to their question. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you of the reason of the hope that is in you. Amen. With meekness and fear. Yes. In other words, know enough to answer somebody's question when they ask you. Yes. Yes. 1 Peter chapter number 5 verse 2 says that our job as spiritual parents is to feed the flock. Now, sometimes I come home from school and I ask my mom, what you make? And if she said chicken, I go, okay. Mm -hmm. but if she said peas, I don't like no peas. <laughs> but her, her mantra was, if I put it on the table, you better eat it. So in other words, when you went to my house, there wasn't no buffet. All right. See, y'all parents, y'all fix four different meals. Sand. Sand. Johnny don't like mashed potatoes. Yes, yes. Susie don't like meat, though. Yes. Your kids is running your house. Y'all yes, can say ouch. And the same spirit is creeping into the church. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I don't, I don't like reproof. Uh, don't talk about correction. Yeah. Don't tell me I got to live holy. Yeah. Put something else on the table. Yeah. He said, no, nah, my job is to feed you. Jesus. As much as I like sugar, it messes me up now. <laughs> okay. I was younger, I could just eat all kinds of sugar. Yeah. Now my head get to hurt. Yeah. I get dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> I had to change my diet. So every day, every Sunday, we come in, buck and shout, and I'm giving you sugar. Mm -hmm. all right. oh my. All right. When the first test comes, you're going to leave the church. Because you won't have enough to keep you. My God. So if I preach against what you like, yes. Yes. when what you like knocks on your door, yes. you have enough water to send it back to where it came from. Yes. So I've got to feed the flock. Uh -huh. Got to give you carrots and peas. Yes. Sometimes give you a real chicken wing. <laughs> but when you leave here, you know you've had a diet that can sustain you through the storm. Right. It says among the feed the flock of God, mm -hmm. which is among you, taking the oversight. Watch what God calls it. This is 1 Peter 5, the oversight. Mm -hmm. This word oversight means to look upon, to under shepherd, to inspect. The shepherd or the under shepherd, which is the leader that God, leaders that God gives you, they were able to look at the sheep and see which ones were sick. Yes. Right. Which ones were weak. Mm -hmm. Which ones has, had eaten from grass that made them weak and sickly? Jesus. Inspect the sheep that were, had a tendency to stray. My Lord. So when God gives us oversight, I told someone the other day, even if you don't tell me something's going on, Holy Ghost tells me something's going on. Yes. 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 
Because as under shepherds, we're supposed to inspect the flock that God has made us or given us oversight. So much so that sometimes somebody calls and say, Pastor, I already know. Because he don't want me shocked. Sometimes y'all y'all shock us. <laughs> And a brother. So when I get the call, the Holy Ghost has already told me. Because what we don't know, what we don't readily understand is there's a human part of us that cries when you cry. That is sad when you sin. Nobody ever wants to see their flock in sin. So the Holy Ghost has to go us up. Yeah. So when the news hits, we say we already knew. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. We're given oversight of the flock to under shepherd, to look after. Not by constraint. Nobody's forcing us to do this. But we're doing it from a willing heart yeah. and a willing mind, not for filthy lucre. Your money could never buy this position. You need to have people in your life that can't be bought. I got you. say everything has a price, but not when it comes to this. We don't do this because of money, prestige, fame, popularity. If that is a person's reason, you need to get out this business. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says we give an account for your soul. I don't give an account for your flesh. You give an account for your own flesh. You know what the Bible says? You should give an account of the deeds that have been done in your body, whether they be good or evil. You take care of your flesh. I'm looking out. That's James looking out for your soul. And any time the Holy Ghost tells me something in relation to your soul, it is God telling you, not me, because I don't know that much. Qualified. Spiritual fathers. The qualification then for spiritual fathers is that they have to have a ready mind and they might and they must be cheerful in the capacity that God has given them. Because if you don't have no joy, being the oversight of God's people, you will be depressed. Yeah. Mm. You have to do this with some joy. Mm. Right. The Bible then says, and I'm moving along here, Titus is in Crete. And the Bible said that Crete was a mess. Uh -huh. The church in Crete was a mess. Paul says, there are many folks in the church that are unruly. They won't subject themselves to rule. They are insubordinate spiritually. Then he called them vain talkers. My Lord. Full of idle words. Wow. He's trying to get men qualified for ministry. He said, but in Crete, you had a whole bunch of folks that were unruly. Jesus. He says, this is the remedy. Their mouths have to be stopped. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I, I, I got to fight in these skills, right? So Paul said, when you see this gentleman off, tell them to shut up. Mm. Now, Brother Jeff, in the world it wasn't difficult for me to do certain things. When I got over in the church, I need the Holy Ghost right. to give me wisdom to do what I would have done in the world in a different way. Thank you. Because Sion was off the hook. <laughs> so me coming in the church, I had to make sure that she was under subjection. Mm -hmm. That any time I came for a spirit, I was coming for that spirit and not that person. Right. Right. So, so their mouths must be stopped. Why? Because they are, they are tearing up whole households. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that if a spirit is unchecked, it will ruin a whole family. Yeah. One bad spirit taken back to somebody's house will tear up the whole house. Y'all yeah. believe it? I've seen it. 
The whole household decides not to be saved anymore. Right. Leave the church. The whole house. I've seen it so. Where the mother came in with a bad spirit. Oh, God. Her, her husband, her three children, and his parents, seven, walked out of the church all at one time based on behavior of one person. Jesus. So your spirit has to be right mm -hmm. so you can be a light to your house. Amen. All right. Amen. God is depending on you to live right so you can be a light to your house. They're not saved yet, but if you go left, when they going to get saved? Amen. All right. Let me move on. I'm going to get off spiritual fathers in a minute. He said they were vain talkers. Meaningly, baseless, deceptive. You never want to follow a deceptive leader. Right. You never want to be a deceptive leader. You get more respect when you put it all out there. This is who I am. And I'm working on that. Titus also says here that them folks in Crete, they always lie. It's in your Bible. He says, one of the prophets in verse 12, y'all believe me? <laughs> verse number 12, chapter number 1. Uh -huh. He said, one of them sells even a prophet of their own. Uh -huh. Said that the Cretans are always liars. They're evil beasts with slow bellies. Uh -huh. It's in the Bible. So Paul, so Titus Paul wants Titus to get some qualified men. Because there was church that folks was just lying. Y'all never been to a church where folks was lying. <laughs> Quit lying. You been to a church where folks was lying. So he's trying to get somebody qualified who has integrity. Amen. So he says, I need to talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. To the aged men. Everybody, everybody 45 and over, just raise your hand. <laughs> raise them high. Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> this lesson is for you. To the aged men. All right. To the aged, aged men. I like how we said age. Hallelujah. To the aged men, those that are senior, God help us. This word age in the Greek is ambassador. He considers the aged men ambassadors. Does that sound distinguished? Ambassadors, that word also means to be far advanced. You age men are supposed to be far advanced. Luke 1 and 18 called you old men. Age sounds a little bit better. <laughs> Not just in your years, but in your maturity. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Don't you know how many 60-year-old men who are acting like little boys? They were graduated in their mind to a level of maturity. I'm helping y'all women so y'all don't get a silly man. Y'all quiet because some of y'all already got silly men. He said, I need you to be sober. That word sober is not just without liquor. Right. But sober means rational. Jesus. I need somebody level-headed. Yes. If I'm panicking, you can't panic too. Yes. <laughs> somebody that's clearly clear-minded. Uh -huh. Sound of a sound mind. Uh -huh. Somebody that's reasonable. Yes. Steady. Yes. 
I'm helping y'all daughters how to pick a right one. Who lets their moderation be known. He says, be not sleep as others, but watch it. You need somebody that if you're going to sleep, they'll watch the house. And, and, and if you hear some noise, they don't go tell you, go, go find out what it is. Come on here. That sound like, what that sound like? Honey, go and see. Go and see. They were built to be protectors. They cover you. They won't let nobody do anything to you. They're watching out for you. They don't lead you to yourself. The aged men are expected to be mature, have a balanced life, responsible, consistent, and dependable. If you don't have a job, you're always looking for one. You might be in between. That's why I'm here to help you. But you're looking for one. Yeah. Come on here. Y'all quiet because I must be stepping on somebody's toes this morning. Clear-headed. They know how to weigh a matter. They know how to operate in wisdom. They're not hot-headed. They're not brawlers. They don't want to fight you. They ain't going to never put their hands on you. Come on here. Are you qualified? I they live in reality. If they get news, they say, well, this is the news. What are we going to do? All right. All right. They don't, they're not in la-la land. They know what's going on in their families. They recognize what's going on in their children. Yeah. They stop stuff before it gets started. Yeah. All right. All right. Age men. Right. Good. Good. Sober. Second thing he said, age men ought to be grave. That means they ought to be, at times, serious. They know how to be serious. Doesn't mean they don't know how to laugh and have a good time, but they know when it's time to be serious. This word grave means honorable. They value honesty. They don't like liars or being lied to or lying. They want stuff honest. Just tell me what it is. They inspire reverence. The age men. When you age men walk into the room, you ought to be revered. You've lived a long time. You've had some experience behind you. You can teach a few things to the younger ones. They're, they're, they're a, they, they live in a place where they are respected in their conduct. When Exodus 20 said to honor your father and mother, they honor you because you live honorably. Leviticus 19 says, respect is given to the gray-haired man. Well, you know, y'all get y'all get gray, y'all just cut it off. <laughs> Amen. I ain't mad at you. Amen. I said, Pastor Dave, where you going? He said, I'm going to give you some dark and lovely for this beard. <laughs> It's lovely, but it ain't dark no more. <laughs> I said, leave a, a few grades. Just leave a couple of them. <laughs> they said they respect the gray hair. Man. When you see someone that's older, they ought to garner respect because they should be respected. They live nobly, steady, serious. They're diplomatic. They don't like to, they like to resolve problems, not create them. The next thing they said that the aged man is, is temperate, self-controlled. He is discreet, disciplined, not driven by emotion. Doesn't live contrary to godly and or holy disciplines. It doesn't live contrary to those things. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, he that strives for mastery is temperate in 
all things. Every level, every area of your life, you ex exercise temperance. That's just the ability to restrain yourself. Because we've got bad, sometimes bad, to the point where we push past restraint. So with the age, man, by the time you get a certain age, you want to be able to show some restraint. And then finally, he said that they're sound in faith. That then they will not be turned and tossed with every wind of doctrine. They're men of charity. They love God. And they love their families. And then finally, they're patient. They're patient with people. Amen. Age men. They're all supposed to have some patience. Patience in situations that require you to wait on God. They don't operate in presumption. Presumption. In other words, they don't just go ahead of things and just hope that it works out. They wait. That's right. Amen. Then you young men. Young men. Everybody under the age of 45. That's a young man. <laughs> you ain't fifty yet. <laughs> he said, "You young men, and I need you, young ladies, to listen carefully because I I need you to make sure he's qualified to have your attention." Right. Right. Young men ought to be sober-minded. Yeah. In other words. They have a sound mind, just like the age men. In all things, showing yourself a pattern or an example. You young men ought to be an example or a pattern of good works. They ought to be able to look at you and say, you know what? That's a good man that does some good things. In areas of doctrine, you young men ought to know the word. You got to read it before you know it. So you ought to have some patterns of studying the word. Amen, young men. In doctrine, in showing uncorruptness. That word showing uncorruptness means that you're a man that has integrity. What is integrity? I'll tell you what they told me years ago. It is who you are behind closed doors. When nobody sees you. When there's a dollar on the table and it's not yours, you can walk away from it without, without taking it. Some of the men in this world lack integrity. We need integrity. Say what you mean, mean what you say. You're going to say it, do it. If you're not going to say it, if you're not going to do it, don't say it. Integrity. In integrity, uncorrupt. That means that you're living a pure life. My God. That you don't have any little dirty secrets. I'm not going to elaborate. Because right. Paul is writing to Titus concerning how men in the church ought to conduct themselves. So as a man, a young man in the church, you ought not have no little dirty secrets. Uh -huh. My God. You ought not put everything before your eyes. You ought not be watching stuff. Talk about young men in the church. We ought not defile ourselves, our hands, with stuff that are unholy. You young men. Because nowadays, you don't hear people telling 
the church how to conduct themselves once they get saved. And so some people come over into Zion bringing stuff they used to do out in the world and it's never corrected. No, we don't cuss. No, we don't gamble. No, we don't fornicate. No, we don't watch pornography. No, we are uncorrupt. Purity, holiness, integrity. That's the man of God. And young girls, if they're doing it, watching it, indulging in it, you better go the other way. Because if they can draw you out, they'll keep you out. I didn't mean for it to be this quiet. But you know, I'm not taking nothing back. Uncorrupt. Pure. When they see you, they should see a young man of God who's keeping himself for his bride to be. Right. Who's not dabbling in all kinds of things. Uncorrupt. Who's not stringing three girls along at the same time. Uncorrupt. Who's not playing one in Illyria and another one in Akron and another one in Cleveland. Ain't no playboys in the church. Uncorrupt. We don't hustle, we don't game, we ain't about the flim flam, we are uncorrupt. I'm going to get y'all ladies next. I'll get y'all next week sometime. The Bible calls some of y'all silly women. I can't be gay unless I get in the game. You don't string me along in your game. I'm not going to be one of your hair up. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Uncorrupt. <laughs> the problem is that some of you likes what's in there. Mm. And you're attracted to it. Because yeah. all of you ain't saved. Because yeah. oh, wow. mm. if I really get saved, I wouldn't look twice. Oh, yeah. I fall in love with God. You don't attract me. If you don't love God, how can I love you? I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about what they're doing in the world. I'm talking about what qualifies you in God's house. We should have weddings. You should find your mate in the house of God. Y'all fishing at the wrong fish. Mm. Y'all trying to bring carpet here. We got white bags. <laughs> Y'all dragging the carpet here. Thinking he gonna be something that he's not. Come on now. And let me help you. Most of the time, if they don't want to be around godly things, that is the main indicator. Now, when God get to drawing them, and their life gets to take, but this is not missionary dating. We don't missionary date. I'm gonna bring him in and. And, and, and maybe he can, maybe he'll get saved. That's missionary dating. You make him your mission. Yeah. Then you want to get mad when he want to take you to the hooker bar. Yeah. Hook, hook, hook bar. Whatever they call the bar. <laughs> well, you, you know I don't go there. You know, you, I, don't, I don't do those kind of things. Well, you already knew what I was about when me and you start talking. That's it. That's it. Wow. You knew I was going to the hookah bar. <laughs> y'all help me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Now all of a sudden you change it on me. Yeah. Want me to be something I'm not. Uh -huh. Uncorrupt. Your young men. Yes, we gonna get some. We gonna get to. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, I need you to send in some young men that want to be saved and sanctified for real. Yeah. So that these young girls, when yeah. they see him, they like, that's the one. I want to marry him. I want to be with him. Because they, they love God. I know they love me right. I want to do right. I want to have a word about them. Sit there and do it and tell them to tell them to keep it. I want somebody that loves Jesus. I'm praying for them. The Lord's daughter, yes. and somebody don't creep in yes. uh -huh. yes. who ain't don't that don't want God yes. and pull the sheep yes. out of God's house. Yes. I'm watching them too. Yes. Because if you got a game going, game recognizes game. I ain't been saved all my life. Right. Y'all daughter's got to help me. Jesus. You gotta tell folk now. Yes. You don't fit the standard. Yes. You're not qualified. Yes. Young men, you gotta tell the girls now. You don't fit the standard. Yes. You got hips and lips, but you ain't saved. I'm telling them hips gonna get about 15 pounds on them. I'll just keep living. I'm trying to run stuff off. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Young men, if the church don't tell you, the world ain't going to tell you. Amen. This is not the hustle spot. Come on now. This is not the pickup truck. Right. This is the house of the living God. That's it. Well, he demands holiness. Yes. Jesus. He said, young men, you ought to be brave, gravity. You ought to know when it's time to be serious. You just can't be playing all the time. Nobody wants to marry a man who's spending 20 hours on Xbox. Amen. I'm not saying this. Don't, don't, don't. If you can Xbox and make sure you still go to work, take care. I'm not talking about that. Amen. I'm talking about I'm leaving you at home playing. I'm going to work while you playing. Come on. Yeah. Come on. All right. I'm getting better because I done got on somebody's nerves. <laughs> it's all right. That's okay. Seriousness. You know how to be serious. You know that your children need life insurance. Yes. Come on now. You know you need to get a job that they have some kind of help with. Yes. <laughs> serious. You should be serious. Because by the time you get past your teens into your twenties, life is slipping away. Yeah. Every day you're getting older. And twenty turns into thirty. Thirty turns into forty. You look at the back saying, where did the time? Because you never got serious. Amen. Right. Not serious about life. You're not serious about God. You're not serious about church. You're not serious about family. You're not serious about getting married. You're just not serious. But God says it's time for you to have some. Be serious. Finally, He says, Be sincere. Mean what you say from your heart. Amen. We don't want no more weak lines. <laughs> no, don't pay the rent. <laughs> all that deep voice, all that, don't pay the rent. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing, but how many young men in this world, we see it every day. And what they do is they're looking for somebody to take care of them. I help you. That's what we we do this together. It's not God's will that I take care of you. Amen. 
until you get, unless you're in a point where you can't take care of yourself. Amen. It is to death. It is in sickness and in health. Because I got you. You get sick, I got you. Uh -huh. But you able body, go young men. I asked someone, when y'all go to job? Oh no. Huh? <laughs> and I'm saying this from somebody that at 16 I had to go to work. Amen. Right. I was homeless. I had to make it work. So when you tell me and you young and strong, you don't know. You know I just I can't hardly tell you. Pick up garbage. Do something. Amen. Where you can say, I work for this. Amen. I work for this. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of a contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Have a reputation so that even if they want to talk about you, it ain't true with this. Amen. Because you can't stop people from talking about you. Just don't let what they say be true. Live a life that is of reputation. Today I just wanted to know, are there any qualified aged men or old men or young men in God's house? I believe there is. I believe there is. <laughs> Ladies, I'm going to have to talk to you all. Paul, oh, don't hold that on y'all. This is what it is. And rightfully so. So we all have our place, our part that we have to do. I want to encourage you, young men, young ladies, aged men, aged ladies, amen, to embrace where you are. Embrace where you are. Paul says that he that is unmarried careth for the things of the Lord. How he may please him. And so if you're in that category of unmarried, this is the best time in right. your life right. to really please God with all your heart. Right. He said, he that is married, care for the things of this world, how he may please his wife, mm -hmm. or she may please her husband. That you, he says, the single or the unmarried can attend upon God without distraction. In, in other words, you don't have to worry about anything that pleases him. Yet. No distraction. While you're in the middle of prayer, you don't get that. What we eat today? Huh? You're just talking to Jesus. Can I? Can I have a prayer? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You can attend upon the things of God without distraction. Your unmarried or single stay should not be a, a season of idleness. The Bible says being busy bodies in other men's matters. Why do I know what's going on two doors down from me? Why am I all in your house? Yeah. I was talking to the ladies then. He said, that's why he said, Paul says, I will that the young men may bear children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because mm -hmm. it'll keep them from a whole lot of being in a whole lot of stuff they have no business being in. Yes. Yeah. It is our heart's desire that we raise and have oversight of sons and daughters. Amen. 
Father. Amen. We want you to be sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's a certain level of conduct and nobility and dignity that comes with being saved. Amen. Amen. We carry ourselves a different way. We just do because we're saved. And people ought to know without us saying. They ought to know she's saved. Even if they don't understand what saved is, she's different. She's different. But you can't have your feet in both ears. You just can't. Play some music. Are you qualified? Fathers, aged men, and sons. Are you qualified? If you're not, that's okay. You have an opportunity to be. You have an opportunity to be. Because you can go to any church in the world and get what you want. You can find any spiritual diet in the world that fits what you want. But as a spiritual parent, I'm not going to give you what you want. We're going to give you what you need. So you can be saved. You can be holy. And you can be right. Let's have a conversation on the way here. Amen. Told the sis. I said, well, you know, if heaven and hell ain't real, I have nothing to worry about. But if it is, somebody's in trouble. Because if you live right, if all that you did, all that you've done in God, and everything that you've done, there's no heaven or hell. Which we know is there is one. Amen. It wouldn't bother you one way or the other. Amen. But if you reject this gospel, Amen. and there is a God, Amen. and there is a heaven, there's a hell, yes. somebody's in trouble. Somebody's in trouble. Today we extend an altar call to you who have never been born again. Born again means that you've been buried in water. Baptism and had all your sins washed away. Because you can never be a son of God without being born of God. Two things you need repentance and baptism. And He will give you the Holy Ghost. If you're in the room today, you want to change life, you want to put away the former things and walk in the newness of life. We invite you to come. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to the Lord. I need your presence. Here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Hallelujah. Don't you want to be born again? Don't you want a new life? Don't you want to change life? Don't you want to be a man of God? A woman of God? That's you. We invite you to come. Maybe you just need prayer. You can line up to the left of me. To the left of me if you need prayer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus.
Jesus, we love you.